In this tutorial we'll be using Grasshopper only to model project Reggio Emilia Stazione Medio Padana designed by Santiago Calatrava. We will learn how to create different types of sine curves with multiple periods and how to generate a shape based on these curves. If you stay until the end of this video you will discover how you can get this definition for free. Enjoy! What's up guys, Lazar here from How to Rhino. welcome to another video. If this is your first time and you want to learn how to use Rhino and Grasshopper, start now by subscribing and clicking the bell button so you don't miss anything. Also, if you are interested in having more detailed and structured approach how to learn Rhino and Grasshopper, I invite you to send an application for our online course, it is the first link in the description. Alright, let's see what this tutorial is all about. As I mentioned at the beginning of this tutorial, we'll be modeling project Reggio Emilia Stazione by Santiago Calatrava. This project is based on the sine curves and the frames that are generated based on these curves. So you will learn first how to generate a sine curve and one more important thing, you will learn first how to generate a sine curve based on the line you generate in Grasshopper. First I'm going to show you how we can modify the shape based on the parameters. So here we can add and reduce the number of the frames. Here we can change uh, the position of the sine curve. So uh, how we want to start. So first one and the second one. And here we can add how many periods the sine curve will have. Also beside the periods we can change the amplitude of the sine curve as well. Here we can change the height of this shape. Using this parameter we can change the width and also using few more parameters, let's say this one, we can change width of each frame, let's say instead of 0.4 we'll set to 1 and you can see how the frame uh, is wider now and using this slider we can change the thickness of each frame. Alright, so let's get started. So the first step will be to generate the line using a line container. So right click and go set one line. After that we're going to evaluate this curve using a component evaluate curve. So in the in the C input we'll set uh, the line which we generated and don't forget to reparameterize. So right click on the input C and check reparameterize and in the input T we will place the range. Range will have domain 0 to 1 and in the N slider we will set later on how many frames we will have. So for now we will define how many points we want to have on the curve. Alright, so once we have the points we need to set the values for how much we want to move them along Z direction. So each of these points will be moved in order to generate the shape something like this. So that's why we're going to use sign component. But first I'm going to open again this photo and I'm going to explain why we need to use sign component. So imagine we use numbers from 0 to 2 pi. So and we have these values. Once we place the values from 0 to 2 pi into sign component, we will get these values. So for instance, if we set number half pi in the sine component, we'll get this value. This is one. If we set value three quarter of the pi, we'll get this value. If we set pi, we'll have zero and so on. So basically, once we place uh, the values, in this case from zero to two pi, we will get these vertical values. And we get these values, which we read along uh, this direction. So basically, here we read the sine value of the half of the pi. The values that we read here uh, will be used to move all of these points along z vector. If we set from 0 to 2 pi, we'll have a curve like this with one period. If we set, let's say, uh, 4 pi, we'll have a curve like this, two periods. If we set like just pi from 0 to pi, we'll have curve like this, half uh, period, and so on. So that's why we are going to use here 0 and domain from 0 to, in this case, 16 pi. It means we'll have this period 8 times because here we have from 0 to 2 pi, 
if we set uh, 16 from 0 to 16 pi it means we'll have 8 times multiplied this curve all right so basically we're going to remap values from 0 to 1 so 264 values from 0 to 1 into target domain from 0 to 16 pi so here we have these remap values I will skip this for now and I will explain later why we why we are using this one maybe I can just connect it here a range of numbers from 0 to 1 264 values remap to domain 0 to 16 pi and now these values we will convert to sine values so basically we just need to add sine component so once we place these values in the sine component we will get this sine values all right once we get the sine values we can multiply by let's say this number this slider in order to get the higher amplitude let's get back here you can see that right now the amplitude is one this is amplitude values this is one so here we set the how big the amplitude will be in our case the maximum of these uh, values is one so that's why I want to multiply in order to scale the amplitude of the curve if I keep it as it is let's say and put in the z vector basically we are going to move them each of these points along z vector based on the values we generate using sine component let's turn on this one all right if we multiply this value by let's say 4 and these values we placed in the z vector you'll get the higher amplitude of the sine curve let's uh, see what's going to happen if we change this slider here in order to change this eight periods in let's say six periods you just need to set here 12. so you can see how this curve is changing or the period of the curve is changing based on this slider all right if we modify this guy you can see how the start of the sine curve is changing as well i will keep uh, this uh, as zero so in order to create one more sine values which are going to be opposite from this one so they will start they will look something like this basically we just need to add one more target domain which will be from 0 to 17 pi if you take a look here because the pi is one difference one pi is a difference between this uh, this shape and this shape so this is one pi this is second pi so if we start the second curve from this value it will have opposite values let me show you what i mean so if we start second curve from 1 pi and finish with the 17 pi we will get opposite result all right so both of these values we're going to keep and place in the remap values all right and you can see here that in each branch we have a two different uh, position of the points based on two different sine curves and these points we're going to move along z vector and later on we're going to create the line based on the original point and the move point along z uh, in order to make it more clear i will keep just one set of points for now all right using a move component and the vector z we will move uh, all these points and using these two guys we're going to generate a line all right if i place this back we will have two set of lines and the next thing is to take one branch or one set of lines and move along this vector how we can get this vector uh, we'll use cross product with this component we can generate normal vector based on the two defined vectors first vector will be will generate from two points the start and the end point of the line so using these two points we're going to create two point vector so this is going to be one vector and the second vector will be z direction or z vector so basically based on these two vectors we're going to define uh, the third vector along uh, which we're going to move one set of lines all right so 
using this line and the start and the end point of the line, we're going to generate two point vector and using Z vector, we're going to generate cross product or the normal vector base of these two vectors. If we uh, set the amplitude of the vector, we get this guy along which we're going to move one set of lines. All right. So once again, you can see that we have two different branches using explode tree. You're going to keep one branch as it is and the second branch we are going to move. All right. Once we generate these two set of lines, we are going to rotate them. You can see in this picture that all these lines are rotated along their center point. So we have something like this. So using center points of each line, we are going to rotate them and the vector along which we are going to rotate each of these lines will be the vector of the original line that we created in the beginning of this definition. So along this vector. This vector we already generated using two point vector from the start and the end of the line. So along this vector, we are going to rotate each of these lines. First, we need to add component rotate 3D. In the G, we are going to place the line. In the center of the line will be the uh, midpoint of each line and the axis of rotation will be this guy, two point vector. All right, so the only thing that are missing is the angle of rotation. Also, the angle of rotation will be used from the sine, from the sine component values. So basically, these guys we're going to remap. Since we have two branches, we need first to explode them. So one set of values we will place in the remap. Source domain we can generate from the bound component. And the target domain that is most important in this case is the value for how much we want to rotate these lines. So basically we want to rotate from, let's say, from minus 30 to 30 uh, degrees. You can see it here. From 30 to minus 30. In the A, we'll place 30, and in the B, we'll place the negative value of this slider. This will be target domain. <clears throat> so these values generated from the sine component will be remapped to domain minus 30 to 30. And here, using radians component, we need to convert them into radians and place it here for the angle. Let's turn this on. And we rotate these lines based on the values generated from the sine component. And the same values of the angles will place in another component that are related to the another set of lines, to these guys. All right, guys. And now once we have uh, these two set of lines, we are going to find uh, the end point of each of these lines and the end points we will connect with the component line in order to get the top part of the frames. All right, and using these three set of lines, we'll join them in one single curve and we'll get these frames. Later on, we can offset them, the offset plane, we can generate based on these curves. So these curves goes in the plane container and the plane goes in the P. Uh, in the distance, we generate for how much we want to offset. Once we have set them, we can loft these two curves. But first we need to graph this set of lines. And once we graph, we need to place in the loft container. Quick announcement guys. Only first 20 people who leave a comment which project want to see in one of our next tutorials will get this definition for free. All right, so we get the surfaces. If we take a closer look on the reference image, you can see that uh, these surfaces are horizontal on the bottom. So they have horizontal line. And if we take a look on our geometry, they don't have horizontal bottom edge. So in order to cut them, we need to find these points. And using these points, we're going to generate XY plane or horizontal plane. And using this plane, we're going to split the surface like this and this part we will remove so first we need to deconstruct these poly surfaces 
and extract only these two and the top one we will remove all right the top one has the index 2 so using cal index we will uh, remove the index 2 from the list and these two surfaces again we need to deconstruct in order to get these points all right how we can define these points first we'll deconstruct them and sort them along z vector all right and once we sort them we will extract all points in the index one why because the bottom one has the index zero the next one with the index one are the points right after the bottom point so is this one so this is a zero this is one a zero one so basically we are going to take these points with the index one and use them as the origin point of the xy plane and now we will add component uh, plane trim surface from the pufferfish plugin in order to trim the, uh, these surfaces we are getting this warning message because of these first two surfaces because they are the bottom two points are on the same z coordinate and then we cannot trim them they're already horizontal and this one as well they're already horizontal so it say okay here plane does not intersect the surface that's why for all of them it works completely fine so in the s we connect these two set of surfaces and in the plane we connect the x y plane all right if we turn on this and i will turn off you can see now that all these surfaces uh, has horizontal bottom edge all right and we are going to join them with the surfaces that we previously extract these are the surfaces with the index 2 so these guys and these guys we're going to join them using component vref join all right and once we get these surfaces we just need to add them a thickness and we can do it by component extrude extrusion vector will be the two point vector we previously generated so this one and if we connect with amplitude we can set for how much we want to extrude each of these frames i set a 0.1 and we'll turn on this and we get this final shape all right guys if you wish to have project files from this and all our youtube tutorials you can get them by supporting us on patreon i would like to thank all our patreon supporters it really helped us to create even better and more valuable content for you and if you made this far thank you so much we really appreciate you hit the like button if you like this video and helps consider subscribe if you haven't already hit the bell button for the future videos and we'll see you guys in the next video see ya Oh, <laughs>